it's my immense privilege to have uh, on this CEO talk, Bracken Darrell, the CEO of uh, Logitech. Welcome, Bracken. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a privilege to be able to hear uh, from you how you are leading a company in this uh, time of, um, of crisis uh, or maybe of opportunities as well. And my first question to you is, what is the impact of the crisis on Logitech? Uh, you know, the, the, like everyone, it's affected virtually uh, every part of our business. You know, it started, uh, it started back in January, actually, in, in the middle of February, end of January, early February, where we had to shut down our factories and all of our supply chain did. And it's like the pandemic itself, it's kind of spread throughout Logitech. And now... Uh, virtually everyone either is or has been working in their home. And uh, of course, it's affected our, our, the demand from customers. So it's really been a very, very broad reaching thing. Mm, yeah. And how did you experience this time personally and professionally in your leadership and in your personal life? Well, I guess I just make two comments. The first is I had, I've had uh, a couple of moments where where I really felt the darkness of the moment. You know, I had, uh, I think about two weeks into sheltering at home, I had a moment where I just sat on my kitchen table and cried, you know, for about 20 minutes. I'm a very buoyant person and super optimistic and positive, but it just hit me, all the people who were getting sick and some were passing away and all the people around them and then, uh, and all the unemployment that was coming. And, uh, and it just really hit me. And then, you know, then I, I came back, I got back to control of my emotions and I, and I went on. I've had maybe one or two moments like that. Um, on the other hand, it's also energized me tremendously. And that's probably the override, overriding feeling. I, I feel uh, just really energized to make a difference and to try to do something worth doing, you know, and Logitech's in such a great position to do that with the products that we sell. Um, and also to be able to do things for good, for social good. You know, we've helped hospitals and patients and teachers and students and so it's been a super energizing period from that standpoint. Mm, Bracken, thank you for, for sharing also your, your personal emotions and experience in this time. It's interesting to see the balance between how we live it emotionally, but how we can actually through our leadership really make a, a difference in the, in the society. Uh, very, very interesting. What are the best practices that you have developed for yourself and for your team in this time? You know, it's so early to call uh, some anything that we're doing in this a best practice because you know it. it they sort of need to stand the test of time. Um, I think uh, if I had to point out a few things, though, it's sort of, that are obvious. One is video, video, and video. You know, it's a, uh, you know, the, it's amazing to me that I was saying to someone last night on a video call like this that you can almost feel as if you've had lots of face to face and. Uh, personal discussions all day long, even though actually what we're doing is all virtual. So uh, you know, you're, you're not really sitting right in front of me, you're sitting on another continent away from me. And so it's remarkable to me how powerful video is. I guess the second one is uh, reaching out and, and creating casual conversation where they don't normally exist. I think the risk here is that you end up scheduled hour after hour after hour, and you don't really have the casual banter that comes with working directly with people all day long. And uh, I like the fun. And, and I also think that's important to break down the, the stiffness that can come with uh, in any kind of business situation. So I would say find ways to be casual. And I do that with very short uh, video calls, uh, very short audio calls, uh, lots of chat. So those are two things that I've found are really helpful. And then the last one is, uh, you know, just be sure not to just find yourself locked in your chair all day long. You know, get up, walk around, go for runs. I try to run almost every day. Uh, it's really critical, especially when there's as much stress around you as there is with this pandemic. So replace the commuting time with, uh, with some physical yeah, exactly. activities. Yeah. Physical commuting time, yeah. <laughs> right, commuting from the home to the home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. How has this crisis changed your management or leadership style? Uh I'm not sure it's changed it. It's probably a few things. Um, I'd say I'm, uh, I'm actually maybe a little better listener now than I was before. Um, 
And, uh, and I'm sure I'm in a constant quest to try to draw out everything I can from everyone to get the best ideas on the table and things. And I think I'm, I'm recognizing a, a, a problem with my management style, which is if I'm sitting in a conference room with six people and one of them is somebody I, I tend to rely on a lot, that person tends to sit in the same place as they always do when we're in that meeting. And I do too. And then there are roles that people take on and they, the, the space actually helps support the role. Uh, one's a dominant player in a meeting, one's kind of a, a more passive player, one's a quiet. I'm realizing how bad, I know how bad that is and I kind of recognized it early on. So I, I kind of realized that actually now I get a much more democratic amount of feedback from people on these video calls, which I really like. So it's probably, I, I think that has changed my style a little bit. I seek that much more aggressively. Interesting. Yeah. And um, have you discovered hidden talents in, uh, in, in Logitech during, during this time, the last few weeks? Uh, you know, I am, well, first of all, I've, I've discovered, uh, I wouldn't call it hidden, but, but deep compassion. You know, it's amazing how many people are doing some things for other people, you know, and whether it's literally giving them a webcam or donating money or, are just uh, in some way trying to make others feel better. You know, it's like, uh, it's really, it's, it's really inspiring how, how much everybody's kind of jumping in in the middle of this. Uh, I guess the, in terms of other hidden talents, we, we, we do have a lot of talent in the company. You know, we have uh, people who are musicians and, and, uh, and, uh, and all kinds of, all kinds of things. So I would say, you know, the, the talents that people had already are tending to get, for whatever reason, people feel more comfortable sharing them on video when it's a little bit remote than they do otherwise. So we are seeing some things we hadn't seen before. That's a very interesting idea. Somehow the, the personal side being being revealed, um, talents that are no, not normally used in the in the workplace um, come out. Very very interesting thoughts. And what are the the values you particularly relied on or relied on more in such a time? Um, you know, I'd say that our values, you know, personal values and company values probably don't, haven't changed too much. You know, I, I, uh, in terms of company values, we're, we, we really big, hum, big fans of humility, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, with humility comes learning, you know, and learning is absolutely critical in this, this restructured environment we're all working in now. And, and with the amount of change in the macro environment. So constant learning that comes with humility and knowing that you don't know everything. Um, on the other hand, you know, sustaining your, your drive, your, this hunger to make a difference. You know, we call it, we, we call it humble and hungry. So this drive to be, to stay hungry and, not, and on edge and looking for the difference. I think, I think the biggest risk you have in a situation that's a crisis like this is that you default to the immediate problem around you and you lose sight of the bigger picture and the longer term. And, uh, and I sort of saw this coming at the very, very early stages. So we immediately defined uh, seven areas we were going to go after that are long-term, that we're going to drive change in. We put teams around them almost immediately. We have a leader in, each, in charge of each one, and I meet with them every week. And uh, I think that's kept us out of the immediacy of the moment and into the future. Because our goal when we come out of this, uh, this you know, this... Uh, pandemic period is to be better, not get back to the same. Yeah, very, very interesting thoughts of balancing the short term with the with the long term and uh, leading into the into the future. Wonderful. Uh, before we go, just maybe a little bit of painful uh, exercise, but could you just share two keywords uh, who, in your opinion, uh, uh, just a good advice for other CEOs uh, in such a time. Yeah, I would say the first one is humility. You know, you're gonna, you need to be comfortable making mistakes all the time, and uh, and then you need to also be willing to laugh at yourself and, because it's a stressful time, and you know nobody needs a, a, another stiff talking head, you know, in front of them on a regular basis. They, they need a little humanity, and I think with humility comes humanity, the ability to you know, sometimes show up and know that your camera's completely pointed in the wrong direction and your dog showed up in the picture and your 
child, you know, it, it, everybody needs to know it's okay. You know, it's okay. And if you, and as a CEO, if you don't, if you don't show vulnerability and uh, the error prone reality of who you are, then others aren't going to be comfortable doing it either. And they're going to be trying to hide something and nobody should have to hide who they are. They should be able to be exactly who they are all the time. So I'd say number one is, uh, is humility. And I, I guess the second word I'd put out there is uh, future. You know, really live into the future. Don't let the present overwhelm you. It's so easy to do. And it's also very easy for me to say this. And it will be much harder for other CEOs whose businesses are more, uh, more dramatically and negatively impacted by the short term. So I'm a little uh, shy about even saying that and letting anybody else hear me say it because they might roll their eyes and say, yeah, easy for him to say. Uh, but I really mean that. I think, you know, you can make, it's amazing how, um, as long as you have a, a clear view of where you're going, the, the short-term decisions that you end up making that really are tactical can be on that path to a longer-term vision. And it's amazing how much you can set the tone and the, um, and the structure for the long-term by the, the, the small and big things you do now. So thank you for your wisdom about humility and, uh, and future. Thank you so much, Abraken, for sharing all these um, wonderful thoughts um, with us today.